What happens when you get paintballs and motherboards? Well, you get the ASRock B650 Live Mixer. And this is the first time I've seen one of these motherboards with such a different aesthetic theme. But at the same time, ASRock are also including features that are designed for people who either prioritize listening to music or music production by delivering two USB ports at the rear of the board that deliver consistent five volt power, meaning that they don't suffer from any sort of voltage drops, especially under heavier loads of power draw. Though at $230, you're probably gonna want a motherboard that does more than just deliver a constant five volt over two USB ports. And here's where we tested the 17 phase VRM and we stress tested with a 7950X, taking this thing up to 5.275 gigahertz. Now, it's a weird number I know, but this is what I managed to max my CPU out on water cooling on this particular motherboard and we're going up over 250 watts. And at these temperatures, we managed to stress the VRM all the way up to 67 degrees on the PCB, as well as going up to 73 degrees on the readout, as well as 48 degrees on the heat sink. However, these levels are really not what you're going to wanna to run your CPU at 24 seven, especially since our 7950X during this test was going up over 110 degrees. So this was really stupid test to begin with, but I wanted to see if the VRM could handle higher end CPUs, especially for a B650. And here's where the VRM held up absolutely fine. However, at a more optimized setting, 5.2 gigahertz all core, that's right, just dropping it down 75 megahertz, we managed to drop the power consumption down to around 200 watts. And here's where we got 58 degrees, 52 degrees, and 37 degrees on those hot spots. So in a nutshell, on this live mixer on the VRM, you're gonna have no problems with the CPUs that are out now on AM5, nor will you have any problems in the future in terms of compatibility and supporting CPUs that even go up to 300 watts, for example, if AMD wanted to go down that route. So here's where you may be thinking, okay, B650, B650E, X670, X670E, what's all the differences here? Should I spend the extra money and go for say an X670E motherboard over a B650? And this actually ties in with the VRM settings and the CPU tuning that we just did, as well as the memory tuning. And here's where I found personally that this is a B650 model. And so what this means is that it has the only option there for the Gen 5 X4 slot on the SSD. The other PCIe lanes on this board, whether it's via the M.2 slots, which you get three in total for those, or the PCIe X16 slots, which there's three of those, two of those being X4 Gen 4, and the top one being a true X16 Gen 4, you don't get the ability to utilize Gen 5 lanes now or in the future. And so the optional there is if the motherboard manufacturer has decided to put in those four lanes via the M.2 slot. And here's where the live mixer does have that support for the M.2, as well as a nice chunky heat sink there to support such an SSD. Though I will put a word of warning, if you wanna go with a Gen 5 SSD, I would actually at this point in time recommend an active heat sink solution on that SSD as they run very hot. However, there's also another key difference that's not really spoken about on the spec sheets from either AMD or ASRock when it comes to B650 versus X670E, at least from the testing I've done here. And that is the fine tuning. That is, I was able to get 5.3 gigahertz, actually 5.325 gigahertz stable on both the X670E motherboards I had here, as well as I was able to get the memory tuning just that little bit better and drop the power consumption down by a little bit. And it's quite odd because the X670E Pro RS motherboard that we have here at the studio, that's pretty much got an identical VRM. So at this stage, I'm thinking, well, what's the main difference then between say a B650 motherboard and an X670E? And that would have to do with the copper tracing used within the motherboard itself, where I do believe they're using, because of the PCI Gen 5 standard, they have to use thicker traces within the eight layer PCBs, which all the ASRock AM5 motherboards do carry eight layer PCBs. So it's nice to see that rather than cheaping out and going with say six or four layers on these motherboards. So for that $50 difference, going from say a B650 Live Mixer to an X670E Pro RS, you are getting thicker traces. There was an extra $50 for thicker copper traces within a motherboard, worth it? I would say no, and that's where the B650, I think, 
is the better value in terms of AM5 boards right now. Though onto the memory compatibility, and this is very important to understand at this point in time, because I think you're going to be limited with AM5 in terms of memory tuning by the CPUs mainly. And here's where we'll manage to get the 7950X to 6200 megahertz stable on this board. Though the moment we tried to boot in at 6400 megahertz, the system was very unstable as opposed to X670E, the both the boards we tested here, the PC could boot to 6400 megahertz, could actually run a few benchmarks, but it was unstable as well. So there's a very fine advantage to X670E versus B650 in terms of memory tuning also. But do keep in mind the 7950X at this point in time, 32 gigabytes of RAM, we could get this to boot at 6200 megahertz, 64 gigabytes of RAM with a G-Skill 6000 kit, that did lock in fine, that was okay. But when I added in 128 gigabytes on all four slots, we were having problems trying to get higher speeds. In fact, on this board in particular, I could only lock in a default 4800 megahertz, which shows that the 7950X, in my opinion, or more specifically, the Ryzen 7000 chips are very limited in terms of their IMC or integrated memory controller and that potential it offers at this point in time, especially for tuning higher speeds on higher capacity memory outfits on this board. So that's very big in terms of its limitations. So in terms of testing out the speeds at this point in time with these higher end motherboards on AM5, the CPU is actually the limiting factor. Though you may have noticed just before some of that cool overlay with the BIOS, and here's where the live mixer, the B650, has a custom themed orange paintball BIOS, just like the motherboard itself. And so going into this BIOS, it's a typical ASRock, fully functional featured BIOS with the ability, also my favorite thing, to tune RGB on those addressable RGB headers via the BIOS itself. So you don't have to install any bloatware within Windows or you don't need any separate LED controllers to be able to get a bloat-free tuned RGB look on the board. Also, the board itself features four RGB LED lights underneath the bottom right-hand corner of the board. And you do get BIOS flashback on the rear and a 256 megabyte BIOS, which is going to support a lot of future upgrades when those CPUs come out. In terms of tuning the CPU and the memory, all the features were there except core control. I couldn't find that within the B650 BIOS. So maybe that is a feature that's exclusive to X670E, for example. However, in Windows, you can still fully utilize Ryzen Master, for example, for quickly figuring out overclocks before you lock them in on the BIOS. You've got the option for Curve Optimizer embedded within the BIOS too. So the BIOS works really good. ASRock need to really change nothing when it comes to their BIOSes. But what about onboard audio? Here's where the board is designed with a Realtek ALC897, which when I tested the numbers, they did come up actually extremely good, despite it having a Realtek, I guess, if you're looking at enthusiast grade audio, the numbers were actually pretty good. The crosstalk was really low, just closing in on that minus 90 decibels level, and the frequency response was really solid. I think we had a minus 1.6 decibel roll off under 20 Hertz, which is extremely good. If you've got some good mid-range headphones, for example, they're gonna pair up really well with this motherboard and give you relatively low levels of distortion. Now, in terms of the mic import, this is featuring heavy noise suppression. So if you are looking at getting some dedicated audio recorded on this motherboard, I would suggest getting a separate solution. Though speaking of separate solutions, as we touched on in the intro, two five volt dedicated ports on the back there that actually run directly from the power supply to deliver a constant five volt. The one thing that I love about the B650 Live Mixer, and I do say love, because at the rear of the board, they've included 13 type A USB ports. And it's to the point where I usually get a USB type C extender because I just need that many USB ports. This thing has 13 of them on board as well as a type C, so you can extend a lot even from that port too if you need more connectivity. Then you've got a HDMI 2.1 port native, as well as DisplayPort 1.4 compressed, which can support up to 4K 120 Hertz from that port as well. Then you've got the option to add in a M.2 Wi-Fi if you wish to have Wi-Fi on board, 2.5 gigabits per second NIC, as well as your optical out, as well as your headphone speaker out, and then your line-in mic-in hybrid. And with all the numbers done, it's time for me to give you guys a clean cut conclusion and recommendation with the B650 Live Mixer from ASRock. And first of all, I'm gonna say is I love it when companies experiment with colors and providing different looks 
and this is what they've done with the live mixer. I just thought this color scheme is just really creative, even though some people will be like, Brian, they're just getting a paintbrush and pretty much flicking paint on the board. It's just good to see something different where we're just used to getting all the same styles from the motherboard companies. And I think if you wanna do an orange theme build, for example, this board is definitely gonna be one on your radar where even things like the heat sinks and the rear IO are themed as well as the BIOS is themed with that orange paintball look. So really cool job on the aesthetics, though we're gonna move into the price now, $230. And that is a steep price for a motherboard, especially one that's meant to be on a budget line of boards, a B650, but this is where pretty much all the motherboard manufacturers have to price these things higher because I'm told through the grapevine that the license chipset itself dictates that they need X amount of phases, they have to have X amount of layers of PCB, they have to have X amount of PCIe lanes. So all these costs on B650 are coming from the fact that the prerequisites are really high to begin with. And so all the prerequisites coming from the license itself make it so that this time around AM5 with the motherboards have a very expensive entry price point. And so what I feel is with B650, even B650 is more of a premium option, believe it or not, <laughs> where I'm testing a 7950X absolutely maxed and this motherboard is having no problems whatsoever. So what I think you're really getting out of B650 this time around, as say opposed to B550 or even B450, is you're really getting say an X670 board. And then if you wanna look at those B650Es or X670, or X670E for example, you can think of them as maybe X670E and then X670EE and then X670EEEE. -E -E. So it just gets to the point where I'm looking at what do I need from a motherboard and the live mixer would give me everything that I need and then some. For instance, even the RTX 4090 is capped at PCA Gen 4. So if you get a Gen 5 motherboard, you're really just buying that for future compatibility. And the SSDs, I personally wouldn't be running a Gen 5 M.2 in my rig at the moment, just for concerns of how hot they run. And if they were to say crap out at any time, then that means my main production rig would also have down times. So not only am I sticking with Gen 4 now, I'm also sticking with Gen 4 for the next few years. So $230, it is a steep ask, and it's not really a value play. I don't think anything coming out on AM5 is really a value play at this point in time, unless you need the 7950X for work and you can utilize all those extra cores and threads and all that power. But even if you wanna get a 7950X, the good news is here is something like the Live Mixer will support the Ryzen 9 7950X absolutely fine, even out of the box to its 230 watts. And if you wanna overclock it, you can go down that route, but this board just delivered. It delivered everything and then some. It looks really cool. I personally prefer the uh, 13 Type A ports at the back and I don't need Wi-Fi. It's got the 2.5 gigabits per second NIC. It's got solid onboard audio. So there's really nothing else that I would want personally out of an AM5 motherboard. So if you wanna go with AM5 and a Ryzen 9 7950X even, and you're looking for a solid motherboard that's going to deliver, then this will certainly do the job. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below what do you think of the new look from ASRock's B650 Live Mixer. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Also, sorry I haven't uploaded in a few days and sorry if my voice is a little bit toned down. I've actually had an extremely sore throat in the last few days and it's on the men's now. It's getting a little bit better. So do apologize if the content's rolling out a little bit slower. But as always, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech content. Be sure to hit that like button and also ring the bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.